2019. All managers are present except Manager Hedgemati, Manager Ragnus, and Manager Olson, but two of them will be joining us shortly. Um, I see no members of the public here to address the board, so we'll move to an added item, which is Ms. Mamayak. President White Managers, I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, announce my resignation from the Watershed District because I've accepted a new position with the Minneapolis Association of Realtors. Um, my last day at the district will be Friday, September 6th. Um, I want to let you know that uh, this is a very bittersweet decision for me. I've been here for eight and a half years and have thoroughly enjoyed every moment at the district. Uh, good and uh, challenging, right? You know, every organization has its challenges, but we've worked through those, and I, I carry all those memories with me, and uh, with with pride, and uh, just with, with with joy too um, for the years that I've spent here. Um, I have great respect for each and every one of you, and also all of the staff for the dedication that you have shown toward our water resources, um, all of the hours that you spend every month. Um, working on behalf of our water resources is really commendable and um, I really do respect that and um, I really have a deep appreciation for the work here and I'm really excited to see the future success of the organization and all the work that you're doing now uh, bearing fruit so um, uh, this is uh, goodbye for now but I will stay in touch and uh, look forward again to seeing uh, what is next for the Watershed District. So thank you again for the opportunity to work here. Thank you, Telly. I just want to say how much I have appreciated working with you and, and just knowing you and wish you every success as you go forward. And I hope that you will continue to be a friend of the Watershed District. Indeed, I will. Thank you so much, <laughs> President White. Appreciate it. I thank think you, you set a, a standard for, uh, for somebody in your position uh, using your skills and your profile both for our benefit thank you very much thank you you will be missed but congratulations thanks so much yeah. I appreciate it take care thank you mr. whisker I just wanted to say a few words on on behalf of Minneapolis Creek Watershed District I just wanted to extend our deepest gratitude to Telly for her dedication and service over um, her last eight and a half years um, you joined the organization back in 2011 when um, the board and the organization was really looking to expand and refine its communications programming and I think that's exactly what Telly's done for us during her time at the district um, there's been more accomplishments than I can list but Telly's really helped redefine our reputation um, in a strong way as a value-added partner in our pursuit of a balanced urban ecology, working with communities and the private development community. Um, early on, you updated our brand manual, which seems like a simple lift, but it wasn't at the time. <laughs> Developing a new logo and led a major update to our website. You really expanded our reach through uh, the skill set that you brought to the table, helping to cultivate, maintain relationships with the media. Um, really dramatically, I think, increasing our positive presence across the, the metro news outlets. Um, the board, I think, enjoys now, and so do the public, all the efforts you've put into updating and standardizing our print, electronic newsletters, just improving the consistency and quality of our communications, and uh, the institution of our twice annual updates, both our mid-year and our look forward that are distributed to all the policymakers, capturing a, a new audience and, and expanding our reach there to, to priority audiences. And then there's all the significant events and event planning. And I don't know oh what your gosh. background was in <laughs> there. event planning and event coordination, but you've done a lot of that <laughs> for us with the Creek Cleanup, which reached uh, you know around 1,600 people at its peak. The Watershed Heroes events that were uh, an ongoing odyssey that to uh, honor our partners clean water accomplishments and then a lot of those event planning culminated in the award-winning 50th year anniversary planning that you did with that sunset celebration with our public and private partners and I think along the way your work's been recognized a lot and appreciated by staff internally the board and uh, the recipient of, of numerous awards a number of which are on the shelf behind you for the we got Northern Lights Communication Award for high water uh, video series back in 2014 um, the Association of Government Communicators in, in 19 that we just got for the Look Forward and, and many, many more. And I think you're leaving us in a really good 
spot. It is bittersweet, and I wish you weren't leaving us right now because we've got a, a huge hill to climb, but you're leaving us in a good spot with the work you've initiated on the strategic communications plan and the website redesign. Um, and so we're, we're going to forge ahead, continuing to align our outreach programming and taking things to the next level in your stead. Um, but thank you. You've left a really impressive mark on Minnehaha Creek Watershed District, and, and we'll miss you as you embark on your next adventure. So please join me in thanking Telly for all of her valuable contributions. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. I don't know what to say. That's really very sweet. I appreciate it. And um, I will just say thank you again uh, for the opportunity and, and best wishes to all of you, too. Thank you, Telly. Thanks, Telly. Thanks. On the consent agenda, um, I'm going to pull item 5.1, which is approval of the July 25 board minutes. We had actually approved those with some changes from the draft, and what's in the packet reflects those changes, but doesn't need to be there because it has been approved. Um, with that, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? We'll approve them. Manager Miller, is there a second? Second. Manager Rodness, those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I ought to have stated that there was a resolution. Madam President. Yes. This is again, it may well be a case of my memory and okay. age, but I'm wondering if we also approve the agenda. We did not. Thank you so much. Good job. Approval. I was so Second. bummed out. <laughs> <laughs> Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much, Mr. With Mr. Smith, for keeping on the straight and narrow there. Um, by way of President's reports, I'll mention a couple of uh, kind of brainstorming sessions I've been involved in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the first was over, um, it was convened by Maud after some discussions between Mr. Whisker and Emily Javins to talk about watershed um, consolidator or uh, consistent approaches to talking about the issues that have been raised concerning um, the cost of developments and, and uh, uh, permitting and that, that kind of thing. Um, and those were some good discussions, a lot of, a lot of effort gone into it, and Mr. Whisker will talk more about that during his report. So I'll leave it there. Um, and then I also attended the Legislative Coordinating Commission Subcommittee on Water stakeholder meeting about their legislative agenda. Um, they had us talking about their issues and, and trying to narrow down what we thought were the priorities, hope we advise them were priorities. They'll refine that and bring it back for another round of discussions. Um, you won't be surprised to hear that climate change got um, a lot of votes as being a high priority issue. Then, uh, Manager Miller, if you can give us a planning and uh, policy and planning committee report. Uh, we had a, uh, a presentation on the uh, uh, engagement process for the partnership model, which is going to take place over the uh, next uh, 18 months or so. And uh, uh, the uh, process was well received by the committee and uh, we'll be getting uh, monthly or or, or, uh, or more appropriate uh, re reports of progress along the way and we also had a staff report on the uh, Taft Legion Lake project updates and uh, in uh, uh, staff laid out a roadmap for uh, communicating and, and judging the success of that project thank you um, the CAC met, Mr. Manager Hedgemati is not here, so Mr. Whisker, if you can give us a brief mm -hmm. rundown there. Yeah, certainly. President White Managers, so the CAC met last Wednesday, um, and the main focus of the agenda was on the, the budget levy and work plan overview, the CAC having reviewed that once before in June. So they got the detailed breakdown and then got a step through of the work plan and communication document. Um, as usual, they were fully engaged, a lot of good critical thinking questions, um, no recommended changes, um, and, and strong unanimous support for the clarity. I think we had a number of comments just about how clear everything's laid out for um, lay people understanding what the priorities are, um, what the expenditures are, um, why, what the public gets for it, um, and the revenue sources. There's also a report from their executive team um, from the meeting that they had had with myself and President White 
Um, general consensus there and the report back was that the CAC sum totals feeling really engaged, more and more aligned. They're looking forward to the next six months of uh, their uh, committee agenda. And then there was a report from, <coughs> and I think it was Richard Nyquist. Um, he's an avid kayaker, Minneapolis resident. Um, he'd said in, in the last year, the creek's become less and less navigable as a kayaker. There's a lot of high water, a lot of down trees, and um, the CAC had a brief discussion about the watershed district's role in maintaining navigability on the creek, um, with staff acknowledging that tree removal, debris removal is really the, in the realm of municipalities, private property owners. The CAC landed on um, wanting to provide feedback through the focus group sessions that were coming up and their engagement in IT, um, suggesting that maybe we build in an app or something to the website where people that are um, visiting our projects or kayaking the creek can report um, obstacles, the condition of projects, complaints as a way to kind of crowdsource information into the district about what's happening up and down the creek, what's happening with our projects. And um, I think that rounded things out. Thank you. It's a good discussion. Thank you. Are there any other meetings or events managers would like to report on? Um, the upcoming meeting and event schedule is, of course, listed in the agenda. And um, Manager Maxwell and I will be attending the next Citizens Advisory Committee meeting in September. Um, we'll now move to the public hearing for the 2020 budget and levy. Mr. Whisker, open the public hearing. <clears throat> My favorite part of the year because I get to come back down here again. <laughs> no one knew you were so easy to please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, thank you, President White Managers, here tonight, um, as President White mentioned, to provide an overview of the Watershed District's proposed 2020 work plan, its priorities, and the budget and levy that support it. And this is obviously um, an opportunity for public input into the process ahead of a final opportunity that will announce um, the next meeting in September for uh, the end of the year. There'll be an opportunity for public comment again in December. So for this evening, I'm going to provide background on the budget process philosophy before stepping through the 2020 work plan, our priorities, and uh, the expenditures, and then the revenue sources that will support that work, and then we'll stand for public comment. So first, just kind of covering the budget process and timeline. Um, in the first quarter, as we do every year, we worked um, with the board on first quarter projections um, looking out into 2020 and started to uh, sideboard sort of the directional priorities for next year um, by starting to look at the preliminary CIP. So that's work that took place between April and May. In June and July, uh, we got together with the Citizens Advisory Committee, took some feedback and began the process of the detailed budget assembly. And then, as you recall, at our last meeting in August, we walked through the budget in final detail, um, the work plan, and um, as I just mentioned, in the Citizens Advisory Committee report. We um, had a pit stop with them last week, and here we are for the public hearing ahead of September, which is uh, when the board will consider budget adoption and levy certification ahead of deadline on the 15th, with a uh, final required public comment period um, out into December. So in terms of uh, the Watershed District's budget philosophy, um, we've adopted a vision of the having the natural and built systems really work in balance to accomplish this triple bottom line where we're accomplishing environmental benefit, but we're also getting social and economic outcomes too. And the organizational strategy for really accomplishing that vision is to build high impact projects, so actually physically change the landscape in a way that gets us water quality, water quantity, ecological integrity benefits or measurements, as well as uh, contribute to thriving communities. And then shape policy that bridges the, the land use and water governance gap. Um, so the budget really is there to serve those priorities and that stri strategy is set by the board, um, which it does in the, the first quarter of each year setting um, priorities. And then staff works to assemble a budget to really achieve the goals that the board's outlined and then come up with the financing to implement that work plan using um, partnership, so partner contributions outside funds in the way of grants, 
um, multi-year levy capital finance to create a balanced approach to implementing our, our mission. In terms of the work plan, I just mentioned our, our mission and our strategy it being focused on capital improvements and, and policy with us viewing policy as creating a positive feedback loop on, on projects. And uh, next year, there's four areas of priority work that we're going to be focused on to accomplish our mission. We've got two focal geographies with the Six Mile Creek, Halstead Bay, and the upper watershed, um, tributary to Lake Minnetonka. And then we have uh, balanced with that downstream and the urbanized portion of the district, our focal geography of Minnehaha Creek. Then we've got our watershed wide, which is the home of a responsive model and how we provide services to the rest of our 178 square miles. And then for 2020, building off of our 2017 strategic plan, we have a series of one-time investments and program improvements. And so I'm gonna step through those uh, very quickly here. So this is the work plan that's been published as part of the hearing that will be distributed and that is on um, our, will be on our website. And so I'm going to step through these in order of, of watershed wide through the focal geographies down towards um, the program improvements. So as I mentioned, the watershed wide work plan houses the, the services that the district's providing across its 178 square miles for its 29 communities. It's the home of the district's responsive approach where we're telegraphing um, the organization's commitment to scanning the landscape for partnership opportunities, evaluating and prioritizing them, and then um, implementing in a priority manner that produces the highest return on investment for the taxpayers while allowing our organization to remain focused on those areas that we've designated highest need, like Six Mile Creek and uh, Minnehaha Creek. In 2020, um, the work in uh, watershed-wide programming includes work funded by the state, the Board of Water and Soil Resources, um, in partnership with the City of Medina, Long Lake, Orono, um, and uh, Long Lake Waters, where we're developing an implementation roadmap for uh, that geography that drains down into Tanager Bay on Lake Minnetonka. It also contains the watershed-wide monitoring, so our research and monitoring program that is there to diagnose issues across the watershed and then guide our planning and implementation. It contains uh, the bulk of the permitting program that's there to protect our natural resources against the land use change uh, that's happening across the district. Um, and then woven in there are the planning and technical assistance that we're providing to our public and private partners as well as our broad-based outreach our communications, education, and uh, funding for maintaining our capital investments, our project maintenance and land management program. Next up is um, the Six Mile Creek, Halstead Bay. Um, for the Watershed District, this really represents a multi-year focal geography. It's a complex system of 14 lakes, five of which are impaired. This drains downstream into Halstead Bay um, on Lake Minnetonka in the upper watershed, which represents the um, uh, most polluted water body in the district, requiring the largest load reduction. It's also un undergoing rapid land use change, so it's an area of opportunity and one that we've concentrated our efforts on building partnership. So we've been working and will continue to work with cities of Victoria, Minnetrista, St. Bonifacius, Three Rivers Park District, Carver, and Hennepin County. Lake Town Township, um, and we've enjoyed support so far from Lassard Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council and the Board of Water and Soil Resources with grant funding and others to implement our strategy out there, which is really focused on uh, managing common carp, which are disrupting water quality inside the lakes, restoring and protecting wetland and upland corridors, integrating stormwater into the rapidly developing suburban landscape out here and then managing within the lake the internal nutrient cycle. For 2020, our priorities include our second year of Lassard Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council funded cart management, the Wasserman, uh, Wasserman Lake uh, Waterfront Park project in, in partnership with the City of Victoria, We'll be looking to implement trail improvements and education programming in the form of signage at the Six Mile Marsh Prairie Restoration on Six Mile Marsh, just upstream of Halstead Bay on lands that the district owns. And then there'll be planning work that we're undertaking in partnership with the City of Victoria and others uh, to build out their, um, their vision for the uh, green print for growth in their western growth area. 
and then the supporting programming of education, communications, and research and monitoring. The second focal geography of the watershed district is our namesake, that's the Minnehaha Creek sub-watershed, and that complements our work upstream in the upper watershed, um, balancing the needs and opportunities um, across our 178 <coughs> square miles. Um, Minnehaha Creek's got a host of issues attributed to urbanization. We've got a straightened and ditched channel, fragmented habitat, and that's created flashy flows. We've got flooding and high water issues um, that are exacerbated due to climate change in the creek. And we've got increased pollutant loading. And so over many years and continuing out into the future, the district's been working closely with all of its creek communities to manage regional stormwater, restore and connect the creek corridor, create flood storage, and manage stormwater in a way that creates a more resilient creek. And then integrating all that work into the urban environment to create a sense of place and community identity that's really um, are centered around the Minnehaha Creek Corridor. So for 2020, the watershed district's priorities in this geography are uh, continue to plan, uh, advance plans, and implement our vision for uh, redevelopment and 260 acres of regional stormwater and greenway connection and expansion at 325 Blake Road. Advancing uh, creek remeander and stormwater improvements, wetland improvements for Meadowbrook Golf Course. Working with the City of Minneapolis and the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board um, to weave together the Southwest Harriet um, Flood Study, the Minnehaha Creek Corridor Master Plan, plans for Hiawatha into an integrated capital improvement plan that clearly telegraphs all of our shared priorities. And then the education communications programming, some of the placemaking signage work around um, the creek corridor the, uh, in the Minnehaha Creek Greenway and the uh, ongoing gauging diagnostic and project efficacy monitoring work that our research and monitoring team um, will be implementing in 2020. <laughs> The last area, the work plan, that we're focusing on for 2020 are the program improvements. And these are a series of one-time investments that are coming out of the Watershed District Strategic Plan. And they're really aimed at improving the watershed's overall service delivery to its constituents and taxpayers. The highlights in here are the responsive model and permitting alignment for which the board uh, in committee earlier this evening reviewed the stakeholder engagement process for it. It's going to unfold over the next 12 to 18 months. And then a series of technology and infrastructure investments. Um, the first one being investment in monitoring equipment for across the watershed, but really focused on the upper watershed. So we can have real-time gauging and understand um, in real-time the watershed district water budget. And then information technology investments. So geographic information systems investments and the database work that the board has been working on with staff to plan an improved and an improved website through a, a web rebuild. And then the last piece are campus improvements here to improve parking lot and fixed drainage issues on site. So that's an overview of the work plan. And I'm gonna step through the budget levy overview here. Um, all of that work and those priorities are going to require a budget of $15,350,177 in 2020, and that's um, going to be supported by a $9.6 million levy, which is flat from 2019, so no increase in our levy from 2019 to 2020. And I'll step through some of the breakdown here, and then we'll get into uh, revenue sources. So in general operations, or in operations sum total, there's a 39% increase for one-time investments. It's a $567,000 increase for those one-time expenditures, the bulk of which are made up in information technology and the building improvements for campus here. Stepping through the line items, there is a $47,000 reduction in general operations, and that's due to the elimination of a position within the operations work group um, in uh, assistant um, admin assistant position as we've recalibrated our human resources plan within that group over the last calendar year. And then you'll see in the information technology, we have a $200,000 increase for next year 
Um, we spent considerable time talking about um, the specifics of what that's for in way of our IT plan. Again, supporting investment next year principally in geographic information systems and permitting, also the web design. Um, based on feedback that we'd gotten from the board back in August and the presentation that we'd received from our information technology consultant, um, WSB, there's a remaining $28,000 that's going to be showing up in the budget as assigned um, into future years um, for 2021 as part of the multi-year investment in technology. So the uh, 2020 budget's been calibrated around the IT, IT consultant's recommendation for $181,000, part of which is capital outlay for new software systems, part of which is consulting service. And then finally, there's the $414,000 for facility improvements, um, or approximately $365,000 of which are capital investment, the remainder of which are for consulting services for uh, engineering and design. Moving on into permitting, we had an 18% increase um, for a total of um, $765,000 2020 budget for permitting. A lot of that is associated with the emphasis on streamlining the rules, and um, you also received a briefing on that earlier this evening. There'll be consulting contracts coming forward to the board in the coming months for both engineering and legal for that planning work. Um, also, within all the programs and in, in permitting here, there's changing personnel costs due to shifts associated with a human resource plan, both a structure and our compensation plan, our pay scale, that are responsible for the increase there. Planning and projects, the bottom line here is $96,000 increase, um, $1.9 million 2020 budget. It's a 5% increase year over year. $45,000 of that is for um, Minneapolis planning. That's the bulk of the change in uh, planning and projects. That's the work to integrate the capital improvement plans between the park board, the watershed, and the city of Minneapolis next year across all those different corridor investments down in the creek. And then there's uh, $25,000 that makes up uh, a bulk of the change along with personnel for project maintenance and land management. That's that next line item there. That's for projects that are coming off of warranty work and uh, being folded into our project maintenance land management program, such as the Bushway Road uh, Jennings Bay project. And we'll continue to, as we um, continue to focus on capital investments, that um, line item is probably going to continue to grow year over year as we emphasize ongoing maintenance of the work that we've actually built. Next up is education communications. As we discussed, I think, earlier in August through committee, we've uh, rolled within the detailed budget breakdown behind uh, these overview spreadsheets. We've rolled together the education communications line items this year. There's a 9% or $66,000 reduction going into 2020. That's um, really all attributed to the suspension of the Watershed Association Initiative and Master Water Stewards Programming our um, partnership that we've enjoyed in the past with Freshwater, that's being suspended in 2020 while the watershed evaluates and aligns its education and outreach programming. At the end of this year and into the first quarter of 2020, we'll receive our strategic communications plan recommendations and we'll be reevaluating um, how those programs might look moving forward. And then we have research and monitoring. A $275,000 increase in 2020, um, some of which is supported with outside funds. We have $59,000 of work that is supported uh, by grant funds from the Board of Water and Soil Resources for that long lake planning. There is Lassard Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council match and grant dollars for the cart management work that represents about $120,000 uh, total, $100,000 thousand of which is coming in and grants from Lassard Sams. There's uh, work in there for the Wasman Lake, both the internal loading sediment analysis and evaluating alum efficacy. But the bulk of that increase, approximately 175,000 of it is for um, equipment to gauge the watershed, the upper watershed, lower watershed, to continue to uh, provide real-time data that will pipeline in through GIS and be put onto our website to both inform um, the watershed district's understanding of its hydrology, hydraulics, and how we're communicating water levels and water flow throughout the watershed to the general public. 
programs and operations in uh, capital project finance and there's a detailed breakdown of scheduled debt service within the budget packet. Um, next year in 2020, we have uh, $2.28 million in scheduled debt payments, 1.2 million of which is for 325 Blake Road. Um, then there's three outstanding bond series where uh, we have scheduled debt payments ranging between 200 and 400,000 for each of those three bond series. And then there is 470,000 for project financing for uh, either new debt capacity or just capital project flexibility for uh, unplanned opportunities. Moving next to our capital improvement uh, program for next year, looking um, relatively flat between 2019 and 2020, <coughs> around $6 million. $2.3 million of that is for the Wasserman Lake uh, Waterfront Park. $2 million of that $2.3 will be coming in the way of outside funds from the City of Victoria pursuant to a recently approved cooperative agreement. $2.7 million is for 325 Blake Road, $400,000 for Meadowbrook Golf Course. We have $170,000 for implementing trail signage improvements at the Six Mile uh, marsh uh, land that we own up west of Halstead Bay and then there's 170,000 in um, debt payments that we'd be making to the city of Richfield next year for the Taft Legion project. So as I mentioned earlier um, that budget is supported next year with a 9.67 million dollar levy which is flat with 2019 so no levy increase projected and uh, stepping through the the rest of the balance of sources here uh, we have 2.3 in assigned funds these are funds that are levied over multiple years for a capital improvement program largely and then left assigned we have $917,000 projected funds to be reallocated from projects or programs that are either coming in under budget, um, being sunset because they're deprioritized, and so we have $900,000 in unassigned funds that we anticipate um, supporting our levy next year. And then we have $2.2 million coming from outside of the organization in way of grants or partnership contributions. I mentioned $2 million from the City of Victoria for Wasserman. Uh, around 100,000 for our second year of implementation with Lassard Sam's Outdoor Heritage Council, 60,000 from the Board of Water and Solar Resources for the Long Lake planning work, and then there's a residual payment coming in from the City of Edina for the closeout of Arden Park in 2020. The last line item there, interest, permit fees, and reimbursements. So um, to wrap up, uh, the boards really continue to emphasize this year as it has in the last couple of years the importance of aligning programming around its capital project and, and policy strategy and we're seeing that um, more and more each year. We've got in 2020 a series of one-time strategic investments that are born out of uh, a couple of years of strategic planning so um, a peak in one-time investments for uh, technology, um, infrastructure and, and program improvements. We do have the budget next year uh, being supported by a flat levy, and that's due in part um, to assigned funds and careful planning year over year, but also a high level of partnership um, outside support for our work that shows up in the way of partnership contributions and grant sources. And as I mentioned earlier, we've heard from uh, hopefully the board by now, because um, you've been working on this for a number of months, but also from the Citizens Advisory Committee that the way that we've put the budget together this year is hopefully a pretty clear communication of what our priorities are, um, how they support our organizational strategy, the outputs that people get, and most importantly, um, what we're spending the money on and where the revenue sources actually come from. So in terms of next steps, um, this evening we'll consider any public comment that um, needs to be entered into the record, and then on September 12th, We'll be asking the board to consider work plan approval and then adoption of the budget, certification of the levy, and that'll be when we'll ask the board also to announce the December comment opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Whisker. There are no members of the public here, but did we receive written comment? 
Uh, President White Managers, we haven't received any written comment as of the meeting. Thank you. Then I will close the public hearing. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Wesker. Thank you. Item 9.2 is the Wasserman Can Lake. Before we move on, I, I just want to sure. uh, comment on the, the, the clarity of the whole process. Uh, the whole budget was developed around policy <coughs> rather than numbers. And it really gave a, a great sense of comfort to know what direction we're going and how we're, how we're paying for it. And I also want to thank uh, uh, Manager Loftus for uh, her uh, digging down into the into the numbers and making sure everybody felt informed and comfortable with every aspect of the of the budget. And that was very helpful and I really appreciate the work you did. Thank you, Manager Miller. Well, I, 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 yes. I, to, I know all the staff turn your mic up. really all the staff has really worked hard on the budget, and I appreciate that. And a special thank you to Ms. Christopher and Mr. Whisker for all their work. I agree with James and um, Dick that it's just really clear. The way you presented it tonight was really well done, too. And it does. Our communication tools, the work plans, really illustrate what we're going to accomplish next year with the money. And I appreciate that. And then um, I think the public should really appreciate that you're doing it without increasing the levy. So I think you've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you to the board for all their hard work and echo Manager Miller's sentiments and thanking Manager Loftus for always asking the right difficult questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's right thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Anything else before we move on? Thank you, everyone. Um, item 9.2, uh, Wasserman Lake Park, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Thank you, President White and Managers. Um, we have several orders of business this evening related to the Wasserman Lake Park project. Um, the sort of main event is awarding the contract for uh, park design um, and construction oversight, um, which is going to position us to, to move forward towards 2020 construction. Um, Prior to that action item um, pursuant to Minnesota statute uh, 103B.251 um, concerning capital improvements uh, by watershed districts, um, we will need to undergo the formal ordering process for the project, um, which includes a public notice, um, a public hearing, and formal board action. Um, we have previously ordered aspects of this project, um, specifically prior to acquiring the land. Um, we did undergo a, um, an ordering process. However, at that time we were operating under a different cooperative agreement where we had more limited involvement in design. Um, so we had only ordered that aspect of the project that was the, the acquisition. Um, so the way I'd like to uh, sort of manage this item this evening is I'll provide some um, project, project background uh, for the purpose of the public hearing, um, pause for any public comment, and then we can proceed to the action item 11-1. I don't know if I said it formally, but we open the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so the Wasserman Lake Park site um, is a 33.5 acre site. Um, it includes a six-acre pond, uh, 16 acres of wetland, eight acres of upland, and about uh, 700 feet of stream channel, um, as well as an undisturbed wooded bluff along the shoreline. Um, this project is a partnership between the City of Victoria and the Minnehaha Creek Watershed District. Um, and we had first identified um, an alum treatment on that six-acre pond um, as a key strategy to improve the water quality of Lake Wasserman to reduce the phosphorus loading um, into Lake Wasserman. Um, and then as we were sort of completing our work on the uh, six miles of watershed plan in 2017, um, this parcel was put up for sale on the, the private market. Um, and we approached the city about partnering um, for a broader site improvement that would not only increase the natural resource impact of this project, um, but would also create uh, recreational amenities and some educational components around um, the watershed. 
Um, so in 2017, uh, the board approved a purchase agreement for the Wasserman West site. Um, a condition of that purchase agreement um, was that we would um, negotiate and execute a cooperative agreement with the city that would spell out the terms under which we would develop this park concept. Um, that cooperative agreement was executed in uh, later in 2017, in May of 2017. Um, and included the terms under which the city would become the eventual fee owner with the district um, retaining easement. Um, and then at that time, it spelled out um, how we would collaboratively develop uh, concept design, um, but then we would sort of be handing off the concept design to the city for final design and implementation. Um, and then another key aspect of that first cooperative agreement was it spelled out how we would allocate uh, improvement costs. So the city would be solely responsible for the park and recreational aspects and the district would be um, managing the alum treatment and then any natural resource enhancements. Um, we then worked uh, through the first part of 2018 with city staff to develop the concept plan um, featured on this, uh, this slide right here. Um, and then sort of coming after the completion of that concept design, worked with the city, um, their policymakers and staff to develop a implementation framework and then a financing plan that would allow this project to be constructed in 2020. Um, and the intent to uh, construct in 2020 and then the terms under which we would move through final design and ultimately construction were spelled out in the second cooperative agreement um, approved in May of 2019. Um, we've talked extensively about that cooperative agreement, so I'm just going to run through some of the highlights. Um, within that second cooperative agreement, we changed the terms of design uh, where the district and city would share equally in the cost of developing the final design um, and construction documents. Um, it held the uh, allocation of construction costs the same in terms of city funding the recreational aspects, um, but it uh, had the district playing a, a larger role in construction oversight and really leading in construction oversight um, and sharing costs of any contracting related to that oversight work. Um, it spelled out the terms um, under which the city would, could finance the project, um, either using Carver County's um, at the, the the agreement that the district has with Carver County, um, their master finance agreement, or financing it themselves. Um, and then finally, it spells out the terms of the title transfer, where uh, title will not transfer on the site until the bid has been awarded for the project. Um, the project budget is based um, directly on the concept plan that was mutually approved by both agencies. Um, so the park amenities are um, estimated between, to be between $1.7 and $2 million, um, all of those allocated again towards to the city. Um, the elements of those park amenities will include a shelter, um, trails and boardwalks, some programmed areas around the shoreland, um, as well as a, a children's play area. Um, the, Site restoration um, estimated budget is approximately 300000 and that's a district obligation. Um, and that'll include uh, restoration in the stream channel um, and some opportunistic uh, investments in vegetation um, around the wetland as well as the woodland. Um, I've also included on this slide the alum treatment, although that's budgeted for and, and managed separately. We have a grant with uh, the Board of Water and Soil Resources for that work, um, but the alum treatment is also a component of the, the district's obligation in all of this. Um, so that is the background I wanted to provide, and so we can pause there. The, Do uh, board members want to make comments? Uh, I just want to ask a question. Certainly. Um, the uh, title will be remain in, in the city's hands? Uh, manager Miller, managers. So the right now the district holds the title, so it'll remain in the district's hands until um, the bid is awarded. Um, and the rationale there is that if something happens in the the next year, um, the district could either opt to retain title or could transfer title. Do, do we have any long-term interest in the in the site? 
Uh, yeah, Manager Miller, we will retain easement over the site, and then we'll also have an agreed upon um, operations and maintenance plan that might include us retaining some of the maintenance obligations. Great. Thank you. There are no members of the public here, but did you receive any written comment? Uh, President White, I did not receive any written Thank comment. Thank you. And knowing that we have a decision item following, I will at this point close the public hearing and move to item 11.1, .1, which is resolution 19073, ordering the project and authorizing um, design and construction oversight contract. Ms. Brown. Thank you, President White. Um, so following the adoption of the second cooperative agreement, uh, staff prepared a design and construction administration uh, scope of work and then on uh, June 25th, received authorization from the board to uh, solicit proposals through a competitive RFP process for that design. Um, the primary service sought through that RFP process was uh, landscape architecture with support from um, engineering and architectural design. Um, and the scope of work was organized into four major tasks. Um, the first one is community and stakeholder engagement. Uh, we asked the um, proposers to think about engagement, sort of give us an engagement plan that reflects the significant amount of support that we already have on the project um, and the work done to date around community engagement, but that also keeps the public involved and informed and allows them to, to weigh in on as the design advances. Um, it also included the project design itself um, and while the design uh, should substantially conform with the existing concept plan, um, there still is significant opportunity for creativity, for design, um, and then to take that uh, creativity and develop it into the, the construction documents. Um, they will also be involved in developing the bid documents and then walking us through the, the bidding process. Um, and finally, we asked them to propose on the construction oversight component of the project. Um, the budget was organized as sort of separating out tasks uh, one through three. So the stakeholder engagement design and bid document development uh, for a max budget of 250,000. Um, and then both agencies were budgeting for the construction oversight within their 2020 budget. Um, so that is um, that was handled as sort of a separate item. Um, the RFP opened on uh, June 26, was sent out to our list of, of vendors, um, and was open for about a month, closing on July 22nd. Um, we received a total of 12 responses, um, which was great um, from a lot of really uh, top landscape architecture firms in the metro. Um, the initial evaluation uh, was done by using this, this matrix shown here, um, and a team of city and district staff uh, ranked and reviewed all of the proposals. Um, we then selected three finalists to um, bring in for interviews and then um, ultimately uh, came to the unanimous recommendation to uh, award the, the contract to Ana Fernandez Landscape Architects. Uh, why did we select Ana Fernandez Landscape Architects? Um, a few of the things that really stood out to staff through this review process um, is that the um, owners of the firm are the ones who are directly engaged in the design and running the design. So there's um, a, a lot of buy-in from the whole firm in this design process and in the outcome of our design. Um, we felt that the level of creativity and just their aesthetics really aligned well uh, with, with that of the district and with the goals um, and the vision of the district. Um, the team has extensive experience bringing their designs to life and actually constructing them in the ground. Um, so while they're highly creative, their designs are, are practical and cost effective so that they will ultimately be built. Um, we felt that they really reflected the model of partnership with the client that we enjoy with all of the consultants that we work with. Um, and finally, we just heard really glowing references um, from other folks that have, have worked with Ana Fernandez. Um, really one of the opportunities that presented itself through this RFP process is to have 12 new 
firms um, sort of weighing in and thinking about this project. Um, and through that process, we got some insight into what some of the major um, sort of challenges might be as we move into this next phase. So I wanted to take the opportunity to kind of brief the board on what we heard because those are probably the things that we'll be mostly working through as we move into this design process. Um, one of the challenges that was raised is the um, site entrance. So there are wetlands on either side of the sort of entry road here. Um, and so there's a relatively narrow passage for how cars will move in um, that would require either some sort of bridge or culvert structure, um, or Ana Fernandez had some creative ideas about how we might manage traffic, perhaps a single lane with um, sort of a stop sign on either side, um, given that there won't be a ton of cars moving through the site. But so that'll be one of the kind of design challenges. Um, another thing that was raised is construction at the sort of North Island area here. Um, it's right now you can't access it um, in, you can only access it in the winter. Um, so any construction out there will, will have to be in the winter. Um, and it's also just going to be more expensive to construct out there. So their recommendation is going to be to look at something with a lighter touch out there. So we're not building a big structure or having a lot of um, bituminous trails, it would be something a little lighter that would kind of get folks out there. Um, related to that is the uh, boardwalk construction timeline. And we were certainly aware moving into this that um, boardwalk construction is best done in the winter. Um, and we were thinking that that meant that that would probably be the last element to be constructed. But again, Ana Fernandez with their ingenuity uh, raised the possibility of move, advancing that uh, bid package forward sooner um, so that we potentially could target winter construction this year mm -hmm. to at least get the helicals in so that when we finish the summer mm -hmm. fall construction of the rest of the park the whole thing will be complete. Um, there are still some open questions about the shelter, uh, what the correct size is, what, whether the restroom should be attached or detached um, and they'll work through that with us. Um, some questions around the restoration concept um, that both our staff and uh, Landbridge Ecological, who's their, um, their consultant for that aspect, will work through. I think the biggest question is how much investment do you make um, in the wetland, knowing that it's a large cattail dominant system? Um, do you do just some enhancements along the fringe and focus rather, instead uh, more in the stream channel and the woodland areas? Um, some questions around parking lot size, whether we really need, I think there's 50 spaces in the concept plan right now, or if we could uh, perhaps shrink that. Um, and then the last thing is uh, determining what the right amount and kind of configuration of the, the trails and boardwalk um, are, particularly as you get out into the peninsula, which is more narrow and you don't want to be too aggressive with, with the number of trails. Um, so these are all just the things that we'll be be working through with them as we as we move into design. Um, a brief rundown on schedule and um, their proposal does include a, a detailed um, schedule, but this is just sort of a general overview. Um, another challenge that everyone raises is that it is a really aggressive schedule. So we are planning to hit the ground running next week. Um, and then uh, we'll be working hard through December to get to 90% design um, by the, the beginning of December. Um, so we'll start with sort of a pre-design phase um, where, we're, where we will really be kind of proofing out the concept plan. They want to get their estimators in right away to make sure that the cost assumptions are, are correct um, and just kind of proof out the ideas in that existing concept plan. Um, the schematic process will really focus on kind of the programming aspect of the site. How do we want to um, focus on, how do we want to bring people to the shoreline areas? What does the children's play look like? Um, so in that process, we'll have our public engagement meeting, uh, which they've proposed to hold on site um, and kind of have stations set up where some of these elements might be so that the public can kind of wander the site. Um, and talk about what might be at these different stations. 
Um, and then we'll conclude that phase with a uh, meeting with Victoria's Park and Recreation Committee. Um, we'll then move into design development where you're taking those concept drawings and um, developing your, your first run of a, a full design uh, plan set. Um, and that phase concludes with uh, both council and board review. Um, and that's, that's spelled out in our cooperative agreement. Um, and then moving into the construction document preparation, which will have to be approved by both uh, council and board. And then finally, um, bidding in late December, early January. Um, so while these are kind of the formal touch points with uh, council and board, um, because we're going to be moving through this so quickly, we'll give routine updates to the board, um, probably in committee, um, so that as we're kind of making decisions and, and reaching um, design direction and design consensus, the board is well briefed before 60% or 90%. Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to just note is that if we were to advance that boardwalk concept early, um, we'd probably be coming out of 60% and going to, to bid that boardwalk work. So um, the budget for this work, the total contract amount um, is about 305,000. Um, the tasks one through three, so where the budget was 250,000 is approximately 249,000, um, and then the construction administration budget, again budgeted uh, for t through 2020, is about $56,000. Um, the costs Can of. Can I ask a question on that? No, I'm Yes. Um, the, that seems, you know, I don't know the scope of it, you know, can't picture it, but uh, the amount of. of uh, Construction oversight that's on Arden Park is just enormous, uh, and it looks like it's it's, re it's required because it's pretty it's more complex. But is it, you you think that's enough? Uh, Manager Miller, managers, I think that's the item that could possibly change as we actually get into construction. Um, I think the the value of including it in your initial design package is that you're going to get a more competitive proposal. Um, and so I think it's the right move to include it now in the, the contract. But um, there's a lot of assumptions built in there. And, and once we're actually getting closer to construction, I think we'll potentially have to revisit. Um, but this is a different approach for us. I think we typically hold off on contracting for constru construction administration. So maybe we'll learn that that's a, a more efficient way of doing it. Uh, is there any uh, benefit to have another party doing the construction administration other than the designer? Uh, manager Miller, manager, I think that even with, with Arden, the designers are remain pretty involved in the construction oversight. Um, so it's possible that there would be elements that we would identify another party that we'd prefer um, to have doing the oversight, but um, I think that there's a lot of value in them being there. And this is also a group that is very well experienced in construction. They've done a lot of construction before, so... Um, and then the final note on the budget is just, again, that those costs are shared uh, between the city and district. However, um, the cooperative agreement has the shelter architecture, um, the city solely responsible for shelter architecture, um, and then the district solely responsible for the restoration aspects of the, de of the design. So there will be some delta um, between the city's obligation and the district's obligation. Um, so with that, uh, staff's recommendation is that we um, order the Wasserman Lake Park project um, and authorize the administrator to execute that design contract with Ana Fernandez Landscape Architecture. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt Resolution 19073? Public hearing. Did we do that already? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. We closed the public hearing and moved on to the action item, so we're good. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Manager Loftus, second. Are there questions for um, Ms. Brown? Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you.
move to item 11.2, resolution 19074. Um, and I see Ms. Christopher is subbing in for Mr. Hagan. Mr. is vacationing with his family, so I would cover this. Um, Sorry about that. Madam President, yeah. managers, um, tonight staff's requesting uh, adoption of the annually revised uh, capital improvement plan. Um, as you know, each year the district updates its 10-year CIP uh, based on additional analysis of projects that are in the plan, um, new opportunities that are identified, um, as well as just assessment of staff and financial capacity each year. Um, and then we send it out to our cities and counties for 30-day review and comment. So in June, uh, the board reviewed the CIP and authorized distribution um, for comment. And this year we heard from staff at the cities of Plymouth and Edina. Um, neither requested uh, changes to the CIP, but really used it as an opportunity to um, flag some future partnership opportunities um, that are in the city's own CIPs. And so staff will continue to um, coordinate with the cities to evaluate those opportunities as they move forward. Um, but uh, given that there were no changes requested, um, staff is recommending approval of the CIP with no further revisions. Any questions? Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt resolution 19074? So moved. Manager Rodmas, is there a second? Second. Manager Miller. Are there questions for Ms. Christopher? Those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thanks. 11.3, resolution 19075, Ms. Reynolds. Authorization to purchase and install a replacement server. Thank you, Madam President. Managers, um, tonight I am here uh, requesting the board's authorization to purchase and install a replacement server. We've discussed this at a couple of committee meetings leading into this when we're discussing budgets. Um, our current server is uh, in due, of, due to be replaced, but in light of the IT update, um, it's really becoming that critical first step. Um, most of the systems that we are evaluating will require a new, newer server. Um, with increased speeds in order to be able to operate it. Um, looking at that, we asked our managed services provider to provide us an estimate and a, for what the server would look like and the cost, and they came back to us with a cost of $91,321.44. Um, I am asking for an authorization for up to $92,000, which gives us about a 6.8% contingency on the labor only. Um, their estimate was $10,000 for labor, and that assumes the ability to utilize a certain amount of our monthly um, hours that we have for IT help desk support. So if we do not have very much need for help desk, then they will be able to utilize more of those hours in the server, and our cost will go down. Um, but just kind of as that fluctuates, um, the needs fluctuate as well. So that's the... 6.8% is approximately five and a half hours of labor in the server update and the server build. We did look at options with the state contract, um, and some items were available under state contract and would come in at a lower rate, but other items were not available under the state contract and would increase the rate um, and had an increased cost. Um, so overall, the staff has looked at this, and we recommend that we just move forward with our managed services provider and their quote and being able to purchase everything as a one from them. Um, don't have anything else for you. If you have any questions about the server, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution? So moved. Manager Olson, is there a second? Second. Manager Maxwell. Um, and I remember, I think, in the, the report that um, if you use the state uh, pool, you would also have time lag and Correct. time is uh, important here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, President White. Um, under the state contract, most things are considered custom built, which means you have to go to the factory and wait for them to be built. Mm -hmm. um, we did use that with our laptops with a standard replacement cycle. That was not a concern. Um, but the three-week delivery time frame that they told me it would be turned into 10, and by the time I got the last computers, it was almost at 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and given the timing, I. That's why staff is making the recommendation to move forward with the managed services provider. Thank you. Are there other questions for Ms. Reynolds? This is an ongoing service contract. Our, with our managed services provider, yes. For how long are years? Um, we're under, next year we will be uh, redoing our contract for all of our 
um, kind of support consultants. Oh, so so we do a two-year RFQ process for them. Anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move to the administrator's report, Mr. Whisker. Yeah, President White Manager's um, first up water level update. And I think oh. this week's um, update is represents the volatility that I think has come to characterize all of 2019. The last water level update I'd provided at the previous meeting um, and, and even prior to Sunday and Tuesday's rainfall events, we'd reported that water levels across the watershed had, had quote, normalized. Um, but between those two rain events, w the watershed, um, across the watershed, we got nearly five inches of rain, um, which pushes us past 2014 totals. Um, 2019 is now the second wettest year ever on record. And um, we're still doing reasonably well. Lake Minnetonka is currently around 929.4, which is uh, just above the OHW. And dam discharge is up from, I think the last time we reported, around 50.75 CFS. We're up to 150. So down at Hiawatha, um, that gauge is looking at 230 CFS. So you can do the math on the difference there between the dam discharge and, and what the creek's picking up from creek communities. Lake Nokomis um, has jumped. It's at 816.4. It's a, a good foot above the OHW of 8154. Um, the Nokomis Weir was opened Wednesday, so that's starting to draw down. Lake Hiawatha is at 814.9, which is two feet above OHW, so that's spiked, and that's pretty normal when you get that much rain event for Hiawatha, just given how it's situated in the system. Um, I think the new report here is um, Lake Harriet has equaled its all-time high at an elevation of 849.06. So we've got some calls from the park board and the city of Minneapolis that want to put their heads together and try and understand, um, just from a systems perspective, what's happening there. Now staff have been out looking at the outlet structure and it's roaring, so there's there's <clears throat> no obstructions or anything like that, but that's a significant jump in, in Harriet that they haven't quite observed before, so that's something that we can report back on. Um, and then Mooney Lake, we always keep you updated on that just because of the pump station that's up there. That's jump, that is a closed basin except for the pump outlet. That's jumped two feet and is uh, up above its OHW. Um, in other water body news, um, there are currently four lakes within the watershed that have beach closures due to elevated levels of E. coli concentration, which isn't necessarily within our purview but it's something that we closely track and coordinate on with partners. We've seen closures at Cooks Bay, um, Nokomis, Bidet Makaska, and Lake Hiawatha for a variety of different reasons. Um, uh, there's also been several other beach closures across August on Long Lake and some other Lake Minnetonka bays. Um, a lot of that's just due to warm weather and the intense runoff that we've been getting. And we're coordinating on that with our community partners, the ones tracking it and making the calls to, to close beaches. And then I know research and monitoring staff are attending a thesis presentation on sources of bacteria in Minnehaha Creek in the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So we're something that we're continuing to track and stay engaged on. Um, and that's probably a good segue into the meeting that Manager Olson, President White, and I have on uh, Monday morning with uh, Carver County Commissioners Carver County staff and representatives from the Pearson Lake Association who've done some uh, citizen monitoring of their own and have concerns about elevated E. coli levels in Pearson Lake. So we're going to go um, check in with both them and Carver County and, and figure out what's going on and report back there. President White had asked me to report on uh, the meeting that Maud had called on, I think it was August 9th, Friday, August 9th, to discuss um, some of the potential conflicts surrounding watershed's regulatory authority, I think particularly in the metropolitan area where there's just a lot um, happening with development. And that was in context of the legislation that was introduced last session, um, as well as information we've been seeing distributed by Housing First or the Builders Association of Twin Cities. It was um, reasonably well attended in person. They had some technology issues, so some of the outstate or rem people that were remoting in got cut out and they will have to catch up in the, the written minutes, but lots of robust discussion on what the issue was um, and next steps. And I think generally where things were left is that MOD itself will work on um, developing a, a set of consistent messaging and potential legislative strategy just to be proactive. 
um, and provide consistent messaging for watersheds around the, the benefit impact of regulation. And then the metro watersheds at a staff level are going to convene and talk about opportunities for consistency, lessons learned, best practice across regulatory programs, and also discuss how we might actually uh, better engage as a unit or a group um, the, the regulated community, so cities and developers. So we'll report back there, and as we mentioned in committee, I think that work dovetails nicely with um, the work that we have underway with our permitting program and strategic communications. Um, other than that, I'm fresh off of vacation, ready for next week, and nothing else to report. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Whisker? Did you have a nice vacation? I did. It was, <laughs> it was wonderful. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.